Humerus. The humerus is the largest and strongest long bone in the upper limb. The upper end consists of the head, neck, greater tubercle, lesser tubercle, and the intertubercular sulcus. The head forms less than half of a sphere and is smooth. It is directed medially backwards and upwards. It is covered by hyaline articular cartilage and articulates with the glenoid cavity of the scapula to form the shoulder joint. Neck There are two necks, anatomical and surgical. The anatomical neck is the constricted portion surrounding the head. It gives attachment to the capsule of the shoulder joint except in feromedially. Surgical neck It is the junction between the upper end and the shaft and is a common site for fractures. The greater tubercle lies in the posterior lateral aspect of the upper end and forms the prominence of the shoulder. The medial margin gives attachment to the transverse ligament. Lesser tubercle is smaller than the greater tubercle and lies in the anterior aspect of the upper end just above the surgical neck. The lateral margin gives attachment to the transverse ligament. Intertubercular sulcus. It is also known as the bicipital groove. It is a depression which lies between the two tubercles. It consists of the medial lip, lateral lip, and the floor. Intertubercular sulcus contains the long head of biceps brachii and the ascending branch of the anterior circumflex humeral artery. The shaft is like a cylinder above but flat and triangular below. It consists of three borders, anterior, lateral and medial, and three surfaces, anteromedial, anterolateral and posterior. The anterior border extends from the lower end of the greater tubercle till right above the radial fossa. The upper part forms the lateral lip of the intertubercular sulcus. The lateral border. It extends from the greater tubercle till the lateral epicondyle. The lower part is called the lateral supracondylar line that gives attachment to the lateral intermuscular septum. Radial nerve sulcus is the groove which crosses the lateral border in the middle. Medial border. It extends from the lesser tubercle till the medial epicondyle. It forms the medial lip of the intertubercular sulcus. It becomes prominent to form the medial supracondylar line which gives attachment to the medial intermuscular septum. The anterolateral surface. It lies between the anterior and lateral borders. It presents a rough tubercle at the middle called the deltoid tuberosity. Anteromedial surface. It lies between the anterior and medial borders. A nutrient foramen is present near the medial border and is directed downwards, hence the upper end is the growing end. The posterior surface. It lies between the medial and lateral borders. An oblique ridge is present in the upper part, the radial groove. The radial groove lies below the oblique ridge, runs down and laterally till it reaches the lateral border. It contains the radial nerve and the profunda brachii vessels. The lower end is broad from side to side and consists of an articular and non-articular part. Articular part. Capitulum. It is rounded and convex and lies lateral to the trochlea and medial to the lateral epicondyle. It articulates with the head of the radius and is covered in hyaline cartilage. Trochlea. It is shaped like a pulley and lies medial to the capitulum. It articulates with the trochlear notch of the ulna. Non-articular part. Medial epicondyle. It is a blunt projection situated on the medial side of the lower end. It is more prominent than the lateral epicondyle and can be felt subcutaneously. It presents with a shallow sulcus on its posterior surface for the ulnar nerve.
Lateral epicondyle is a projection on the lateral side of the lower end. The olecranon fossa. It is a hollow depression situated on the posterior surface of the lower end. Its floor is very thin, hence may get perforated. It lodges the olecranon process of the ulna during extension of the elbow. Coronoid fossa. It is a small depression situated just above the trochlea. It lodges the anterior margin of the coronoid process of the ulna during elbow flexion. Radial fossa. It is a very small depression lying lateral to the coronoid fossa and above the capitulum. It lodges the head of the radius during elbow flexion. Determination of the side. The head lies on the medial side of the upper end and faces medially, backwards and upwards. The lesser tubercle projects from the anterior part of the upper end. The intertubercular sulcus lies on the lateral side of the lesser tubercle. The olecranon process lies on the posterior side and the more prominent medial epicondyle faces medially. The head and the medial epicondyle point opposite the side they belong to. Ossification The humerus is ossified by one primary center for the shaft, three secondary centers for the upper end, and four secondary centers for the lower end. Upper end of humerus The ossification for the head appears in the first year, for the greater tubercle in the third year, and lesser tubercle in the fifth year. The ossification center for the shaft appears in the eighth week of intrauterine life. Lower end of the humerus. The center for capitulum and lateral phalange of the trochlea appears in the second year. Medial part of the trochlea in the tenth year, lateral epicondyle in the twelfth year, and medial epicondyle in the sixth year. All the ossification centers in the upper end fuse together by the seventh ear. All the ossification centers in the lower end fuse together by 14 years of life. Fusion with the shaft. The upper end joins with the shaft by the 20th ear. Lower end joins with the shaft by 16 to 17 years, and the medial epicondyle joins with the shaft by 18 years. Clinical correlation. Nerves related to the humerus are axillary nerve around the surgical neck, radial nerve in the radial or spiral groove, and the ulnar nerve behind the medial epicondyle. These nerves are often involved in the fracture of the humerus at the mentioned sites. Common sites for the fracture of humerus are surgical neck, shaft, and the supracondylar region. Supracondylar fracture of the humerus. It is caused by fall on an outstretched hand and commonly occurs at a young age. Clinically, it presents as a backward displacement of the lower fragment with unduly prominent elbow. This fracture may injure the median nerve and the brachial artery. This location of the shoulder joint is more common due to the capsule being loose and the size of the head being very large compared to the size of the glenoid cavity. The most common dislocation of the shoulder joint is the inferior dislocation.